Hello dear, welcome to Dab Mentors. My name, of course, is Talent and Gospel, and uh, we've been doing quite a lot of things. Recently, I've been working on a project uh, for Solana. I just recently completed a series on Solana, and so we're working on a project that we want to use that to teach you guys even deeper things on how to put together, you know, um, a project with Solana, full-fledged project. Okay. So with that said, <clears throat> today's uh, in today's uh, meeting, I just want to sh tell you, share something with you, and the title of that is how to learn blockchain development. You know, because many people don't truly understand how this blockchain development works. You understand? Uh, blockchain development is not for the faint heart it has to be something that you invest time in you know and attention but you must do it in the right perspective you see um i'm gonna go through some things about six items that you must consider while learning blockchain development so that it's going to cut short um your journey you get what i'm saying like I don't know if you've learned about that, you know, children of Israel's movement in the wilderness. If they just did the right thing, it would have been cut short for them. So I'm trying to reduce the time that you have to spend, you have to spend, you know, in the wilderness to get things done in this blockchain space. So um, these items that I'm about to share with you, they're all based on what I myself have, you know, personally do in my own learning and development over the years i think i've been learning this doing this whole blockchain thing for about uh i think i started 2022 you know but now it's 2024 so basically it's just around i mean 2021 so basically around three years you know or so so and there is a systematic way that i do this and this is just based on wisdom all right it's not like i'm some kind of a genius it's just a simple wisdom on how i follow these things that made me so pro productive and honestly over the years i've been able to do quite a lot of significant things such as i've been able to release a book in solidity i've learned so many things i've published a youtube channel and i've taught many things in here concerning blockchain development i have also shot so many premium courses and I've also developed and spearhead operations in building uh, project blockchain related projects for you know myself you know my company and and my clients okay and also I don't know if I've mentioned this I've actually released a lot of free courses here on YouTube as well so these are various things that I've streamed out that has come out of these three years of investment in my learning progress in this blockchain space okay so i uh, humbly i'm saying that i'm just um a contributor in this space and i've helped many people as well even done consultancy and so on many of those sort of things but my journey didn't start there i've been a developer for a long period of time okay and i think i'm approaching nine years in this development industry software development programming and all that so i know quite a couple of uh programming language they may not be like deep as the ocean but i one thing about me is that i like to get things done i get things done you understand that that is just my gifting you know like when i want something done that is what i pursue i don't pursue trying to know redundant knowledge things that are unusable so those are the things that you should know as a background for these things that I am about to discuss with you. So let's get into the things you need to know to build and to learn how to, you know, do uh, blockchain development the effective way. Number one, be project oriented. <laughs> I'm telling you this. This is going to save you a lot of time. Be project oriented from the very onset have a vision about what you want to build don't just come into any 
uh, field and you want to uh, achieve great things, so you just learn things randomly. No, you need to structure your path toward it. So you need to have from the onset, what do you want to achieve in this blockchain space? Like for me, when I came into this space earlier, my goal was to build an NFT, you know, maintain decentralized application. I was just fascinated about the whole Web3, you know, uh, trend. So that was my entrance into that space. So um, I dived in. That is what I just wanted to do. So anything that I learned in the process of achieving that project was only tied to that project. You see, I remove myself from trying to learn so many uh, blockchain programming language that is not how you do it is the project that is what you want to achieve so if you follow that path you're going to really shorten your wilderness journey okay so that is one thing you must understand okay once you have the project that you want to achieve in your mind and in your heart you've written it down great you now move to the next stage now. The next stage is to break your project into smaller components, okay? Breaking it into smaller components is very important. This is, this will, you know, reduce the cumbersomeness and the complexities that you're going to have to face. So it's, it kind of reduces your battles that you have to fight. Systems generally are made of smaller components, you understand? Smaller components makes up a system. So if you don't break it down into smaller components, then the, the entire, thinking about the entire system can overwhelm you and then you could easily just have a cold feet and you dump that project. So you don't want to do like that. So you want to break the project into smaller components, just like with if you've been developing with React, you have header component, you have this, you have um, heroes component, you have cards and all of that. So that's how you need to think about uh, uh, building uh, your project in the blockchain space. After you've you know, broken it down into smaller components, then the next thing you want to do is to gather information about how to achieve that specific component. I am stressing this because it's very important. This is very tricky to a lot of people. And this is one of the reasons why people f get stuck in what is called um, tutorial hell. <laughs> okay. Tutorial hell is just, um, it's just a self-sentencing to a, 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 a model of learning that keeps making you a perpetual dependent entity on a teacher, on a mentor, on a video, or whatsoever. You don't want to be like that. You want to learn what you want to learn and get out of there. You get that. You don't want to be stuck learning YouTube video upon YouTube video, course upon YouTube course, and you don't get to translate it into your own project. That is not how this thing is done. If you go like that, you're going to be stuck in tutorial here. So one of the things you need to do for, you know, you know, is after you've broken down your components is to gather information on how to develop that component. For example, when I started learning Solidity, okay, one of the projects that I had in my mind, which I worked on, was crowdfunding system. So the first thing I have to do, okay, was like, okay, how am I going to achieve this? Okay, I have the front end, which is one component. I have the back end, which is another component. I have the, the integration angle, which is another component. Okay, now, how am I going to achieve the smart contract, which is one of the components that I'm talking about? Now I have to learn Solidity. And how am I going to apply this? Okay, I have to learn Re uh, Remix ID. They code it with Remix ID and all of those things then. So, all you need to do is to research how to build, how to code a crowdfunding smart contract. Don't go and search for how to learn Solidity what to learn about solidity because you're going to be taught so many things variables that, that arrays these these things that don't really you know come together to help you achieve your goal of building a crowdfunding system do you get this distinction it's just a difference like this now in the process of you learning how to build a crowdfunding system you're going to see 
how variables are declared. You're going to see how arrays are declared. You're going to see how mappings are declared. And you can literally just do a little bit of a Google research. What is this variable? And they will just tell you, okay, this is an unsigned variable that does this and that. And then you, you get it. You don't need to go and learn it the other way around, trying to learn every single thing about that language before you start building something. This is what I'm telling you right now. And if you follow this step, you're gonna get, you're gonna hit it just great. So, okay, how do you gather your information? It's not only just about researching, but it's about get get your information through videos, through text. You know, which is tutorial articles that are online, such as in Hakanun, Dev.2, Medium. You can get all those, you know, textual tutorials and information from those space. Mentorship is really good as well. So if you have access to someone that you can listen to and it tells you or you can ask some questions about, that is cool. Also, put that in your, in your, uh, in the part of the things that you want to achieve. You get that that is part of the sources of your information. And lastly, but not least, for people that are, <laughs> have been born into this generation and you're in this generation, don't forget this very important one. This one is very useful. Get the services of an AI assistant. Okay? AI assistants are just awesome. In fact, one of the videos I'm going to be sharing with you afterward is um, how. I'm going to be reviewing two pair programming AI that you're going to be using that I do use for my own development purpose and I will encourage you to use because that is where the world is going and you get to know, understand how to utilize AI in acing your work. Okay, so with that said, those are the things that you need to gather information as you're going. The next step, the next thing, which is the number four, is be research driven. Be research driven. Okay, so. This part, again, and I mentioned, is not for the faint heart. So you're going to be confronting issues, problems, as you start you know, tackling each one of those components that makes up your project. Okay, when you have that kind of issue, you have to research. Be deep in your research, be wide in your research. Don't just be narrow-minded and wanting to be spoon-fed. Oh, I'm going to look, and then who is going to help me now? Oh, who is going to help me do this? And you start, you know, you do research. There are information of already there. Do that. Nobody have time to come and be your customer care in trying to help do your code, except you pay those people. So if you don't pay those people, know that they are busy, so they will not always be there to come and assist you with your code. So you have to do your own research. And doing your own research gives you these traits called grit. Grit. Okay, it makes you a, a, a tough person. It makes you a hard person. It makes you someone that is, you know, self-managed. You understand what I'm talking about? You're not always needy and dependent on people and, you know, to get you going. That is not how this journey is okay so you have to um be very researchful deep and wide all right so and the fifth one is for you to repeat that process for all the other components in this particular project that you have chosen so you do that you do after you achieve one project the one component you do again you do your research you go through the process of uh, of gathering information and solving that inform and solving that problem, and then you have issues, you research and you apply the knowledge you're getting and all of that until you achieve that, and then you go again until you finish all your components. All right. So the last step, but not the least, this is very important. Please, this has really helped me a lot, and I'm sharing all this information for you for free. And if you're wise enough, you take it and apply it into your own. Uh, life and your own journey. The last one, but not the least, is teach the project. You have to teach that project that you just achieved. Because after you finished working on that project, there is one more step that you, most people don't do. You teach it. You teach it, you can choose to teach it video-wise. You can create a YouTube channel or something like that and, 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 build, and, and teach that. Or you can even teach it in person if you want to. Okay? But that is not like my preferred means, but that I've also done so. I've done that as well. 
one-on-one -on -one teaching and all of those things then i'm one to many so i i will if i were you i will teach that project i will teach it in either video format or textual format Textual format could involve things like writing a tutorial on Dev Doctor, Medium, or Hakanoon. This is very important. Doing this helps you achieve some things that you will not even know until I, somebody tells you or until you start seeing the result. For example, one of the advantage of teaching that project is you gain mastery in it. Because one thing about knowledge, knowledge often it's not totally complete until you're able to teach another person. So knowledge involves you receiving it, you applying it, and when you've gotten the result, you teach others. That is a complete circle of knowledge that most people don't do. So you have to teach it, and then it becomes part of you. Secondly, you get one extra thing that most people don't get. You get visibility. You make yourself visible by these things that you're teaching. Many people are consuming it. Some people, they are looking for, for, for those that can offer that sort of service. So by, by you teaching it, you're actually advertising yourself at the same time. Um, if someone wants your service, they can reach out to you through that means. You see how this thing goes. So you are making yourself known you know because you don't want to be under a rock you don't want to be under a rock and do all these things you know before you even start applying for jobs and all of that you will already have credibility because now if you want to apply for work and all of that you can have abundant evidence that shows that you are you have mastery and you are capable of producing these sort of items by the demonstration that is seen in your teaching I hope you get this thing. This is just very simple. So these are the steps that I do follow in order to uh, learn blockchain development. Okay. Sometimes immediately you're finishing these steps, you already start getting offer. Somebody's you know wants you to do something like that for them, but you never know because you you want to skip this particular sixth step and just jump into the job process and all of that. So uh, this is my own perspective and opinion and, and you know, experience. So is that how you take it or you leave it? But this is how you learn you know, uh, blockchain development from my perspective. So that is all I wanted to share with you in this particular tutorial, all right? So in the next one, I will talk about different subjects and hopefully I get some of the you know, bugs that I'm facing in the uh, Solana development resolve so that I can teach you that one as well. Okay, so those are the things that are coming into the channel. So ladies and gentlemen, men and brethren, <laughs> I will see you in the next video. It's Darlington. Have a great one.